Morning guys and welcome to episode 22 of the Brighton Jazz School podcast. Thank you very much for joining us. We've got a great show lined up for you, but I'm afraid it's been a pretty sad week in the jazz world. We lost one of the great trumpet players, uh, Abraham Wilson, who was living in London at the time. At the young age of 38, really, really, really tragic. And uh, the jazz world has lost not only a great musician, but a great ambassador, spokesperson, teacher, uh, and just an all-round amazing guy. Very, very sad. So I'm going to be featuring some of his music a bit later on um, from his last album. And yeah, we had a great concert at the Brighton Jazz School last week. The final end-of-year concert went down a storm. Very, very proud of all my students, so well done to you. Feedback we had was great. Everybody thought you played magnificently, and uh, you certainly did. We've got a fairly exciting week coming up this week. We have the Tim Garland concert on Thursday, which is tonight, so you probably won't hear this by the time this goes out. But we've also got, uh, we're featuring Tim in a special masterclass tomorrow, Friday. Um, So get along to that if you can. Of course, we have part two, the final bit of uh, Andy McIntosh's interview from last week. And we're going to be featuring some exclusive tracks from uh, his career. And as well as that, we're going to be doing a a smaller section of passing notes, um, checking out what we did in the repertoire course on Tuesday. So a really packed show. Don't go away. Grab yourself a drink. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the show. Sponsored by Personal Financial Designs, financial advisors based in Worthing. Check out the podcast page on our website for a link to get more information. This week we're featuring music from Abraham Wilson, um, who sadly died earlier this week. We're going to feature some of his tracks from his uh, latest album, which is called Life Paintings. But before we do that, I'm going to give you a little bit of background information about Abraham, where he came from. He was born in 1973 in Arkansas, and he started playing trumpet at the age of nine. He won a scholarship to the Ohio Wesleyan University, where he studied classical trumpet with Larry Griffin. He then went on to get a master's degree from the Eastman School of Music in Rochester, New York. After graduating from Eastman, he moved to New York, started working with his own band, the Abraham Wilson Quintet, and regularly performing with the other trumpet master, Roy Hargrove. Wilson arrived in London in 2002, where he performed with the Julian Joseph Big Band and meeting the directors of June Records. And they were responsible for putting out one of his first albums. It's a very well-respected record label, um, featuring British artists such as Jazz Jamaica, Greg Osby, Soweto Kinch, and Denise Baptiste. From mid-2004... In mid-2004, Abraham worked in a secondary school in Walthamstow, London, where he taught music for a year. His first album on June was called Jazz Warrior, and that was the beginning of his solo career. So let's have a listen to his playing. We're going to listen to a track off the album Life Paintings, and this one is called From Dusk Till Dawn. Listen out for the signature New Orleans trumpet sounds.
There you go. So hopefully you could hear Abraham's New Orleans influences coming through there. This album was recorded in 2009 and it features Peter Edwards on piano, Carl Rashid Abel on bass and Graham Godfrey on drums. Let's check out another track from this album. This is called Obama and obviously in uh, dedication to uh, America's president. Check out the military type introduction to this one. slow things down now and I'm going to show you the lyrical side to Abraham Wilson this is a great track and this is called Even Though You're Bad For Me Thank you. 
Wasn't that stunning? I think you'll agree, if you haven't heard Abraham Wilson before, hopefully this podcast will allow you to go and check out his music. Visit abrahamwilson.com and check out the discography. He's recorded a lot for Dune and got three or four discs out on with Dune Records. And I think you'll agree, he's an absolutely fantastic musician. And it's so tragic that he left us so, so young, the age of 38. He died on the 9th of June, 2012. He'd been suffering from colon cancer, kept it very quiet, didn't really tell anyone and um it was in the middle of this tour that sadly he uh, he he left us but please i urge you to go and check out his music go and buy his albums i'm going to leave you with this final track now this is called breaking point and it's um it's a real tour de force just to show you that he could play like best of them so this is abraham wilson and this is from the album life paintings and this is called breaking point <laughs>
I never forget my first gig with Super Sax. Mm. We flew to Chicago. I can't remember what the gig was. And I was depping, playing second alto, mm. and I had just gotten glasses. First glasses that I'd ever had. Yeah. And they were glass in the days before these plastic ones. Yeah, yeah. So he gets to Chicago and I'm in the shower and I go, up oh, time for a shower and all that before the gig. <clears throat> and I dropped my glasses on the bathroom floor and it was stone floor. Oh, I know. Shattered the glasses. So I showed up at the gig and I, to Med Flory. I said, um, hey Med, I said, I've got no glasses on this. I said, sorry, man. Mm. I said, I can't see a fucking thing, you know. And, <laughs> And the music is like reams and yeah. reams of blackness, mm -hmm. you know. Can you imagine mm -hmm. what the second alto pass to Charlie Parker solos are like? Yeah. Fuck, you know. Yeah. Excuse my French, folks. <laughs> and uh, he said, you know, his words of wisdom to me were, he says, well, he says, when you see the music go up, he said, go up. <laughs> when you see the music come down, he said, come down. He said, don't play in the gaps. That's pretty good advice. And I went on and did it. And I, got, I, got, I got the gig back. Yeah. I went and played with them quite a few times. So I must have done it okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> he, said, he did say to me, he says, no, he says, apart from the lead alto and the baritone player, which are in unison, mm -hmm. the octave mm -hmm. apart. Yeah. <clears throat> he said, we, nobody knows this music. We can't play it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you play second tenor or second alto or first tenor or something, you, you, what you do, you, you're skating over most of it. Yeah. You just don't play in the gaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking great advice, <laughs> I thought. Absolutely. You know, that Absolutely. was Med Flores. Yeah. He's still about, Yeah, I do believe. I noticed you've got a really nice um, homage to Charlie Parker up there on your wall with a signed... Is that, is that Yeah, that's his, that is his that's signature. That's his signature, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, um, that was given to my father by the drummer in his band, mm. Bobby Kevin, around about 1953 or something like two or three. Mm. And a bunch of them, he took time off from my dad's band and went to New York on the Queen Mary or the Elizabeth mm -hmm. or something, whichever the boat was. And purely just to spend a couple of days in New York, that's, what, that's, why, that's how most musicians mm. went to New York for the first time. Yeah. And in those days, the ship used to stay for two days. Mm -hmm. I did it myself. And it was a great time, you know. But nowadays, it only stays for eight hours, you know. Oh, really? Mm. In those days, you get a, at least one night overnight stay. Yeah. And most of the rest of the next day. Yeah. And uh, so they went to the Three Deuces, had their photo taken with Charlie Parker, and mm. he signed it mm. and said, and it says that you're... I'll show it to you, Wayne. Unfortunately, mm. you folks can't see it. But it says to Bobby. Wow, look at that. Huh. That's incredible. And there it is. I think that is a scan, actually. I think I scanned. That's the actual scene. Yeah, that, that's, wow. That's on the back of the Three Deuces card. Mm. And that's the picture of... And that's Bobby Kevin. I don't know who these chaps are. They're uh, chaps yeah, in the band. I've seen that picture before. In you know, one of the history books. Anyway, he came, he came home and gave it to my father. Wow. And I've inherited that. That's something I tried else. to give it back to Bobby, actually, I have to say. Mm. A number of years ago. I said, Bob, I've got this thing here. It's yours, really. Because my dad had given it to me before his death. Right. <clears throat> and I said, Bob, I've got it. And I had done this scanned it all and yeah I said if you want want the original back it's yours mm, you know mm, mm. and he said no nah, it's yours now you know wow which is nice of him just before he died too yeah lovely very nice so that is a quite a historic piece absolutely that one, you know? yeah yeah I've got one or two uh, Cannibal was another one um, I haven't got anything of Cannibals yeah <clears throat> apart from a couple of photos and somebody there's a painting on my wall you'll see. Yeah. And that was done by a student of mine. Right. Who knew I was a cannibal freak. Wow. And he, his name was Michael Jackson, believe it or not. Wow. He signed Michael Jackson. <laughs> and it's awful. I've got this leery, um, I shouldn't say this, Michael, thank you. But I've got a fairly leery uh, painting print of cannibal on my wall. 
and he gave me that as a present for giving him lessons. Huh. But he was an artist. He was at art school. Yeah. He eventually ended up having um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, d not demonstrations. Um, exhibitions. Exhibitions yeah, in yeah. in galleries and stuff in London, which he used Great. to invite me and my wife to, mm. which we've been to. Lovely man, Michael. Mm. Anyway, but I remember I did meet Cannibal a couple of times. Really? And I never forget meeting him. I was in with Maynard. And we were in Chicago. I mentioned Chicago again. Yeah. Um, playing at a jazz festival. <coughs> and we're in a big stadium. And, I'm st and I, can, I can see Cannibal standing in the wings. Kind of, he had that hat, like mm. a, a kind of leather cowboy hat type yeah. thing he used to wear. And an alto slung around his neck, you know, on the strap like this. And a cigarette hanging out of one corner of his mouth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, so I go over and I made a point, because we both had short sleeves on, it was warm. Mm. I made a point of walking over and touching his arm. Mm. I made a point of my, my, my arm touching his. I felt such a fool, really. <laughs> <clears throat> and I, I even got that one where I asked him what kind of mouthpiece he played. And yeah. Kind of reads. Yeah. I even knew. Yes. <laughs> but I thought I've got to say something just to strike up the conversation. Yeah, you know? yeah. And you know, we got quite friendly. And eventually, Thad and Mel were on the same gig. Mm. And Thad came up to Cannonball and said, Hey, he said, uh, Jerry Dodgen has missed the plane from New York, slept in or something. And the second alto player, Eddie Hickus, his horn has been damaged mm. on the airplane. Mm. He says, why don't you come and play the lead alto for us? Wow. To Cannibal. Yeah. And Cannibal says, I can't read that shit. <laughs> you know. He said, he's your boy. Cause, and he points to me. Wow. Because he knew that, and Cannibal and I were the only two alto players on the whole I show. See, yeah. He said, he's your boy. Of course, in those days, I could tune out and spit rust, you know, as mm. far as reading and mm -hmm. playing it out or and all that. Mm. So, uh, so Thad just said, well, will you do it? And I said, well, yeah, I'll do it. If I'll ask Maynard first, which I did. Mm -hmm. And Maynard, he was overjoyed. He said, of course, go and have a good time. I hope you enjoy it. And yeah. That, you know, it was wonderful. Fantastic. So I played the evening with Thad and Mel. Wow. It's good. Amazing. Fun. On Cannonball's recommendation. Yeah. That doesn't get much better than that. Oh. I was I was going to ask you what was your most memorable so far your most memorable musical highlight, but I'm guessing that might be it. Musical highlight or experience, you know. Um, so. That was pretty nice. I must admit, had we had a lot. There's been so many. Mm, mm, mm. We had a lot of fun with with uh, Maynard, mm. but don't forget I played with Buddy and mm. Quincy and all that afterwards. Yeah. Um, and, and James Last, I dare I say. Okay. You know, it, it's a diff different genre of music, yeah, yeah. commercial music and all. But boy, do we have a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, myself and Derek Watkins. Yeah. And good band, you know. Mm -hmm. but we, we, you know, we might, the music might be not what we're used to, but mm. we at least played it well, mm -hmm. you know, and had a lot of fun. Yeah. And the best big band people that always ask me who's the best big band Jack Sharp of course yeah no doubt about that that's mm -hmm. the best band I ever played with mm -hmm. no doubt about it mm -hmm. I wonder if we can play some of the stuff later <coughs> well I, I think you'll find I've given you one or two tracks great I've yeah. given you a couple of CDs yeah, if yeah. not I can find you some stuff yeah. can you nick stuff off my iPod or the computer or what yeah I think so yeah I'll give you stuff to Great. Well, we've uh, we've looked at you. Um, what do you call it? DVD. Yeah, last, last week. Last week. Wow, that yeah. was something else. So I've got loads of it. Yeah. You know, so hopefully Wayne will play some of that for mm. you, folks. Absolutely, absolutely. I want to ask you probably the most, not the most difficult question, but we, I try not to plan any questions in these mm. interviews and let things just happen naturally. And uh, except for this one. Um, and this is the improvisation tip of the week. If you can give us, it doesn't necessarily have to be improvisation, but something about playing that you've discovered that you think would benefit, you know, up and coming 
musicians. Oh, it's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. I d I must admit I put I'm going to I'm going to answer this question for you <laughs> by the way, <clears throat> but I put this a similar question to a drummer friend of mine from New York. In when he came over to London to visit, and mm. I took Ralph Sammons mm. to see him when Ralph was about fifteen or sixteen. And his name, the drummer's name, was Danny D'Imperio. Right. He was at that time he was playing with uh, Louis Armstrong All Stars or something. Mm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I, you know, and I took him. I said, Ralph, you've got to come meet Danny. He's one of my, my best friend. You know, in the states at least. You know, mm. probably in the world. Mm. And I, so we've, I met Danny in his hotel and we were in a restaurant or something. I said, Dan, I said, lay something on Ralph. One, word, one piece of advice that you could lay on him mm. that will last him and make him a better drummer and the whole thing. And do you know what he did? He showed him the cymbal beat. You know that one, the ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding, ding. He showed him how to do it. Wow. And it's a very simple way of doing it for you drummers out there. It's the trip. It's a triplet. It's not a dotted quaver with a sixteen. Mm. The triplets. Yeah. So it's da 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 da. So you, oh, the, drum, you. so okay. the drummers can. He said, fill the gaps. Yeah. With your left hand, as a, as an exercise. Yes. And so so you're going ding 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 ding, and, and then da 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 da. Yeah. Da, da. So, okay. So you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Independence, type that's of thing great. That the drummers do. Yeah, but it, he does. He came straight up and late. And Ralph's, of course, one of our greatest drummers now. Mm. <clears throat> you know, and uh, he'll he stays in touch with Jack with Dan. You know, mm -hmm. that's great advice. Yeah, that's sort of that's a simple one to do. Yeah, and it yeah. was it was not only was it, it wasn't ethereal. No, no, it was practical advice. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Practice that, da 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 you know, like fill the gaps with your yeah, left hand yeah. and play the symbol with your left Well, it sort of heightens that polyrhythmic sort yeah. of feel, doesn't it, as opposed to one single pattern. Yeah, it's that thing with ding, ding, da ding, ding, yeah, da ding, yeah, ding yeah. you know, it's not right. No. It's not on. No. It's meant to be, you know, because the triplet thing makes it sound more laid back, I mm. suppose. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. I've been all the way through giving you the drum story. I've yeah. been thinking about that one. We're getting two, two bits well, of advice <laughs> passed down. We, I think we touched on this subject earlier. The thing about improvisation is get so good on your instrument mm. that it becomes zen-like. Yeah. That you don't ever have to think about playing it. Mm -hmm. It gets so good you can play anything that comes into your head. Mm -hmm. Anything at all. Mm. And yeah. a book to read. How about this? Zen and the Art of Archery. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember you mentioning that. It's about a, a guy from the States, actually. He goes to Japan, I think, and becomes a Buddhist monk. Mm. Or he goes to t where's, uh, Tibet or somewhere. Mm -hmm. And they teach this guy archery. And he gets so good at technically at archery, yeah. firing the arrow. <clears throat> that in the end they could put blindfolds on him turn him around in circles the whole yeah. thing and say go ahead hit the target and he never missed the bullseye wow. he just always knew mm -hmm. he couldn't miss the bullseye and it's a similar thing and it's a wonderful read by the way I know mm. a short book sounds great yeah fantastic check book. That out. and I think that's it when you know certainly for single note players I suppose yeah. it's the same with piano players yeah. and guitar players too mm -hmm. slightly more complicated for you guys you've got to really really do it all at once haven't you yeah I guess so but it's from a, a single thing. point single note point of view you know you should, we should be be able to this relative pitch isn't it mm. yeah should be able to play any note that comes into your head yeah Absolutely. you should know what that is in relation to the one you just played yes exactly shouldn't yeah. you yeah. yeah and that's practice isn't it it is it is. Anyway. There you go, folks. So all you've got to do is hit the bullseye. That's, that's all that's there is all. to it. <laughs> but that's great. That's great advice. And, uh, well, I'd just like to thank you for your time, uh, Andy. And it's always a pleasure to hear you play in these small, you know, sometimes dingy places in Brighton. It's an absolute joy. I'm, I'm used to it. And <laughs> But it really is, you know, a musician of your calibre and here you are in local pubs and it's, it's and 
and not just local pubs, all the all the great local jazz clubs as well. Which uh, wow. uh, should we give the verdict another plug? I think we should. Oh, I think the verdict can be. What, so good what, plug what is your favourite place to play in in Brighton? The verdict. <laughs> I've got to say that now, haven't I? But, I mean, it's true, though. Yeah. I mean, what else? Um, the first ones were the Albion, mm. George Trebar. Thank you, George. Mm. And that's, how, that's when I was living in Hayward's Heath. He invited me down to play there, and that's where I first met Sarah Oslag. Yeah. Um, so I still do it occasionally. George will say, can you got another Albion? You want to come and do it? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Yeah. And it's not really, a, it's a jazz pub, but they're, they're all just a bunch of drunks and <laughs> they're not really listening to the music or anything. It's no. just a pub. Yeah. But yeah. it's somewhere to play, isn't it? Absolutely. And, like, and he's always got like Roy Hilton or somebody mm -hmm. on the piano mm -hmm. and um, somebody good. Mm. These guys to play with, you know. Yeah. So it's all, I always enjoy it a lot. Yeah. You know, I'd like to plug the Brighton and Hove Concert Orchestra and the Brighton and Hove Saxophone Quartet. Mm. Who have taken me into their fold, mm, mm. and that's been good fun too. It's kept yeah. me practicing and playing. You know? Yeah, yeah. Great. Where can we find out where you're playing? You, you don't have I a website, website so at so the say. moment. I'll, um, Facebook. I'm in the maybe. A Facebook is the only thing I put on. Yeah. Okay. It's I'll, all right to I should tell people to add you and. You can Facebook me there anytime you, go. you like. There you go. Permission. From the horse's mouth. Go find, <laughs> find Andy on Facebook and, and and you put your gigs, post up your gigs where you're playing. I do there. tend to put stuff up. Great. Yeah, well, where I'm playing and so on and so forth. Great. It's, I don't think there's anything up there. I think I, I stopped last week. At, well, I didn't stop, but the last ones were for Kathy, I think. Yeah. So there you are. Yeah. Great stuff. Well, thanks, thanks again, man. Andy, and uh, we'll see you around town. Look forward hey. to hearing you soon. Keep your eyes open for Wayne Pond. <laughs> Welcome to Passing Notes, and this week in the repertoire course, we were checking out the great standard Alone Together. Now, it's a curious song, really, because it's an AABA, but it's not quite the same format as we usually deal with. So, basically, we went through, we sang the melody, learnt the melody together um, three or four times, and then we looked at the root movements of the chord progression. Now, it's in a minor key. First chord is D minor 7, so chord 1. Then it's 2-5-1 into D minor, so quick 2-5. Another 2-5 into D minor. And then a 2-5-1 in G minor, and the G minor is for two bars. Then we've got this uh, sort of B minor 7, E7, G minor 7, C7, F7. So we've got a 2-5, then a quick 2-5-1. And then the curious thing is that it resolves into D major. So this is quite an interesting uh, thing here. We start off in a minor key, and then it resolves into D major. Now it's also got this extra two bars. So it's sort of 14 bar A section that's repeated. Um, that's pretty curious as well. Then we go into the bridge. It's a minor 2-5-1, a long minor 2-5-1, one, one bar each. Uh, a minor 7 flat 5, D minor 7 flat 9, G minor 7 or G minor 6 for two bars. Then... The second part of the bridge is a 2-5-1 in F major, but normally the 2 um, is, a, is a minor 7 flat 5, and then therefore the 5 is some kind of altered C7 flat 9 or C7 altered, uh, resolving to F major, and then a quick 2-5-1 back into D minor for the, for the final A section. The final A is actually only 8 bars long, so it does all add up to 32, but it's not a standard sort of... Uh, form in terms of bar numbers but it's a great song and um, can't urge you enough to go and learn it it's fantastic I recently heard a great version by uh, the Brad Meldow Lee Konitz and uh, Charlie Hayden and that's on Alone Together it's their album it's a trio absolutely wonderful interplay and very worth checking out so I know that's a bit of a whistle stop tour around Alone Together it's really just describing the form for you but um, if you can join us on the repertoire course do um, and if you can't, as I said, we're in the throes at the moment of putting together uh, an online version for you to check out. So if you don't live in Brighton or if you're you know, abroad, 
um, you, you can still be a part of the Brighton Jazz School with our online programs. So uh, we'll keep you updated on that. Head on over to brightonjazzschool.com for more information, and we'll catch you next time on Passing Notes. Well, guys, it's coming towards that time that I have to start to wrap things up and uh, say my goodbyes and say my thank yous. Thank you very much for joining us. I'd like to send out my deepest condolences to the Wilson family um, and also to his wife. We have lost a really, really important and incredible musician, but I hope you seek comfort knowing that his music and therefore his spirit will be alive forever and uh, will bring much inspiration and joy to uh, people who listen so please folks go and buy his albums thank you so much to andy for doing that wonderful interview we're about to hear a fantastic track of his to end the show thank you as ever to mike for putting the podcast together and thank you to you for listening please head on over to brightonjazzschool.com forward slash podcast and there is a lovely paypal button on there should you wish to uh, donate it is expensive running these podcasts and getting all the material together but uh, it will always be free but if you feel like you can support us a little bit financially please uh, click on the paypal button and enter some lovely uh, digits in there for us thank you so much for listening and i'm going to leave you with this killing track i think that's the word uh, the youngsters use these days featuring andy mcintosh Thanks again for listening and join us next time on another edition of the Brighton Jazz School podcast. This is your host, Wayne McConnell, signing off. Thank you.